Warning. Broken simulation. Broken simulation. With Sam Tripoli. Welcome to Broken Sim. We be in it. Yeah, Johnny. I, you know, like, we I'd like to start it. off the show by an apology, a real quick apology to Dr. Dre for talking any shit I talked about him in any past podcast because I was just listening to this new, it's not a new song, but it's the first time I heard it, which is The Watchers. It's it's like the best song ever. And it just is like every guy my age in comedy. It's just like. The Watcher is a song uh, from 2001. Is oh, that right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But it's, I just recently heard it and I just can't listen. To, have you ever listened to a show seven times in a row? A show? What a show? So, a song. Have you ever listened to a song seven Probably times not. in a row? No. Yeah, I did that on the ride over. This song? Yeah. I just can't stop listening to it. Things just ain't the same for gangsters. <laughs> Times is changing. Young inwards is aging. <laughs> becoming OGs in the game and changing. <laughs> to make way for these new names and faces. But the strangest things can happen from rapping. When inwards get wrapped up in image and acting. Inwards get capped up and wrapped in plastic. <laughs> <laughs> Zipped up in bags when it happens, that's it. I've seen them come, I've watched them go, watched them rise, witnessed it, and watched them blow. Watched them all blossom and watched them grow. Watched the lawsuits when they lost the dough. It's so good, Best dude. Best friends and money, I lost them both. When visited inwards in the hospital, it's all the same <laughs> shit all across the globe. I just sit back and watch the show. I love it, dude. It's just about aging. It's just like, I've seen it all, dog, chill. Yeah. That's what it is. Like, that's where I am right now in my life. I've seen it all, chill out, not hitting the panic button on anything anymore. It's all gangsta lean and gangsta G's. You know what I'm saying? i just seen it all, dog. It's like that David Bowie song, Changes. That's another. Oh, it's great, dude. I, I, there's only a couple songs where I've listened to it like seven times in a row. What are some of the others? Uh, Ice Ice Baby is the other one. I just, I could Are listen. Are you joking? No, I'm not. I could listen to Vanilla Ice singing Ice Ice Baby over and over again. It is. Really? Oh, it's so and good. I, see, I could listen to that song he stole that hook from. Yeah. Uh, oh, I could listen to that too. That Under Pressure yeah, a thousand a times. So, Johnny, you know, um, uh, who's I talking to? Oh, my friend has this new show on Value Entertainment. His name Brady's Matthews. It's called The Mouthpiece. And he's such a funny, great guy, and he's a good friend of mine. He he got a sports show on the mouth on uh, Value Tainment, which is a huge thing, dude. It's like it's huge. If you guys get a chance to love sports, check out the mouthpiece. And uh, when, when you say it's on Value Tainment, that means it's on their YouTube channel. Yeah, it's oh. like it's one of the shows they're producing. That's cool, dude. Yeah, dude, you get to talk sports in Florida. Like, what's better than that? So, and it's like he would talk about how some people are like, oh. This show sucks. I'm out in the comments. I, like there was somebody on our YouTube just right now. It's like, what is this? A podcast? Ooh, this is so bad. Yeah. You're like, oh, dude, you're just showing up to talk. Nobody's taking you serious. Nobody's taking you serious. And and if I you click on their shit, dude. Yeah, it's never. It's just nobody. It's like, dude, we know you're coming from one of these fucking loser podcasts that, and you're just talking. We know it. We don't care. Say whatever you want. So, but the reason I bring that up is because one of the greatest pieces of video you will ever see in your life have we talked about this is when david bowie and, and um who's the lead singer queen uh freddie mercury freddie mercury sing under pressure acapella and then you see that like four people hit thumbs down and you go oh if it's possible to publicly say this sucks then everything has the possibility of sucking. Therefore, who cares who thinks it sucks? If this can be said, if someone could go, this sucks, it is the greatest video you will ever hear in your life. It's I the greatest. I wish we could play it. It's just the best. If you get put the put the link in so people can hear it. Okay. And how many thumbs downs does it have? It doesn't show it anymore. Remember? Oh, they got rid of it. Yeah, it. I remember when they did. It had like ten. Yeah, but wasn't it because of like Lena Dunham or some shit like that? No, no, Who no, no. It? They got rid of it because Amy Schumer. Right. Yeah, Amy Schumer. Right. And then you also can get Joe how Biden I got them mixed up. Joe know. Joe Biden also when he you remember he was ha like his inauguration. It was like oh, five right. people yeah, liked yeah, it and everyone. Yeah. Oh, okay, we're getting rid of the down, yeah. the thumbs down. So stupid, man. Yeah, and and they they had like feedback on that. You know, they were like, "Well, we welcome your feedback. Maybe we'll bring it back." And everybody said, "Bring it back," and they still didn't bring it back. 
Yeah, it's they crazy, dude. It's crazy. Um, so yeah, so I don't know what the point of that was, but there well, we go. I mean, that's this whole show, isn't it? Really? I mean, it's like, what is the point of us? What We're is the point? Yeah, time. that's what this guy is like. This is a podcast. Yeah, it's a podcast about absolutely nothing. I mean, what podcast do you hear that is uh, you know where you're getting work done? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I mean, unless it's an instructional it's podcast, so where you're learning dumb. how to build a house it is or something. So dumb. It what is, is the point. So it's entertainment. Dumb. So Johnny, got to be honest with you, had one of the uh, best. Weeks uh, performing with the uh, Prophet Eddie Bravo and young Xavier Guerrero. Sounds like about how many people uh, were there. I actually saw you. at a, I, that, that was the most packed I'd ever seen the comedy store Tuesday night for Comedy Chaos. I don't think I've been to that show probably four times now, maybe five times, and that was the most packed I'd ever seen. Well, you know what's very interesting about it was that they finally allowed um, us to fill the whole room. Oh, is that used, what it is? Okay. No, they used to be like it used to be they kept us. Is that because I, of COVID? Yeah, or, it was all oh. the COVID stuff. Like they're finally, you know, God bless the comedy store, or, uh, Richie Taylor, the GM, and everybody there is great. Uh, they finally started putting names back on the marquee. Like that, they oh, weren't doing that, that yeah, forever. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, on the and way now in. they put comedy chaos up, and so we'll see how that goes. And I'm there happy were about, about that. 15 people on the guest list that walked in ahead of us too. I, it was like I was like, I wonder if he actually sold any tickets. Or no, I mean there was a lot of guys. Xavier Guerrero bringing an entire uh, uh, was that actually people group in? of like illegals into the into the po- into the show. It was uh, quite a guest list, I'll say. It was. I don't care. We sold a ton of tickets. It was packed. Like in the second show, Eddie Bravo brought twenty five people from Tenth Planet, <laughs> and it was just all jujitsu guys on the corner. Hey, if a fight breaks hey, out, dude, those are the guys I'm you down, want, man. Bro. Oh, dude, I'll tell you that funny ass story, dude. Oh, really? So we're doing the show, bro, and I don't know why, dude, but uh, it's so funny. This like uh, this really hot chick comes up to me after the show, and she's like, "You're so funny." I go, "Thank you," because. I go, thank you very much. That's great to see. You know, because, Johnny, I've decided I'm going to take a, a, a vow of celibacy with everything all the time. So I'm not going to have sex for a year. I don't believe that. Okay, but just know I'm not. Okay. And I'm in a committed relationship. Okay? I am. And, of course, the minute I with say that. The Lord? The Lord. I'm trying. Starting tomorrow. Okay? I haven't watched porn in three weeks, okay? Just know I haven't watched porn in three weeks. And I, Johnny. You still jerk off, though, right? Sorry. I yeah, have I have. I do. I you do. Have I, to. I a mean, man has to release, or yeah. else he's going to get weird nuts, right? If you don't release. You know, I, I have wet dreams, if I don't. The, Lord, the Lord's like, got to gotta clean it out. Got to clean it out. But just know, like, it's so crazy. Each one of that is a, is a, has a DNA sequence for a human being. Oh, yeah. And, and the it's succubus just gone. Is taking it away. And it's yeah. just gone. It's gone to the world. They used to tell me in church that. It, if you had wet dreams, it was your fault for putting all the thoughts in there that created the dreams. So it was, <laughs> I was like, you got to avoid those thoughts. Dude, when I was like five years old, we were fooling around with the fu- with the with the girls down there. I'd like, dude, I didn't even know about God or anything like that. Like, you know, it's oh, like. I knew about it from very early. Oh, yeah, because yeah. you got drilled in. Because you guys thought, you know, you might be fighting the North again about for slavery. So you guys had to have the Lord on your side. <laughs> Right, they thought they had him on. The, that's so. That's one of the funniest things about this. They both sides are always so oh my this, god. Like insanely. By the way, the new look now is all the girls are getting their noses pierced. What you mean the the septum pierced? Yeah, yeah, middle? yeah. That's the big thing now. It's, it's kind of hot because I, I think they're all in the anal. I don't know why, but that's just. Yeah. My vibe. I've gotten a few messages saying that, hey, Sam's right, by the way, about the Yeah, one hundred percent. Johnny, I know you don't believe me. I come from psychics. Oh, that's loud. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, you come. You can come from psychics. Yeah. I'm come from psychics. We have a baby that sees dead people. Stop judging, okay? The baby sees the dead. The baby told you that. Yeah, well, the, the, baby the, the grandma told, told me that. The baby psychic yeah. told well, the grandma. Well, the psychic that. told the psychic that the baby's psychic. Okay. Okay, stop judging. Anyways, so I'm hanging out in the back, and I'm like, this tall drink of water walks up to me, and she's like, you are so funny. She's in town. She's pol- do, looking to do Pilates instructor. She's a Pilates instructor. She's like 6'1", no septum, dressed to kill. It's like music to the ears of anybody who, any With guy who gets by on funny, you know, as opposed to maybe looks or strength, you know, like muscle mass. The you are so funny is like just. You oh. are so funny. And it is music. like the the great, I mean, it's like, 
And you kind of look at like Christy Brinkley and you're like her, her one kid with, uh, Billy Joel, right? Is that who? It is? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then her kid with the other guy that she, by nature, should have been hooking up with, which is oh, a I super gotcha. elite. Yeah. And then you compare yeah. their daughters. Yeah, one looks like a Viking. The other one looks like <laughs> a, a reporter at BuzzFeed. Hold on, I gotta see this. Hold on, that's right? gotta be Billy Joel's. Daughter, of course, right? yeah. dude. Look at that. That's Billy Joel's face and a hot chick. Yeah. yeah. And then you look at the Viking next to her, <laughs> yeah. who's a, a copy that's of her so, mother. Look at the copy so of the mother. That's so funny. Her, what did this guy not even have any genes? Like, what? What is his problem? Who? He, he look. She looks just like her. It's I almost like the husband didn't have any genes. She married like a guy who looks like uh, the, the 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 guy Lundgren from or yeah, some yeah. Dahl Lundgren who just German gorilla hunter the whole time, right? Try to find her new husband. Um, let's see. It must be. Is that their daughter? What is it? Ex husband. Oh, ex -husband. that's his new girlfriend. Good for oh, him. Oh wow, twenty one years old and he's six. Dude, that get guy it. Must be loaded, right? dude. You know he's. You know he's. Oh, there he is. Yeah, there. Yeah, you get right, it. Yeah, right, yeah. right. I mean, he looks like Superman. Like that's that. That's who she's supposed to be with. John Wayne. Or like something. two Vikings. Totally. Then she just bangs this this incredible piano man. Who just sloppy jeans? But who can, at his best was not a looker. I mean, well, no, at his at best. His best yeah. At his best. And they still put out good looking kid. She's still gorgeous. She's just not a Viking. Oh, here's the guy. Here's a good I mean that's he looks like a Kennedy. Or oh yeah, look at right that there. right look there. Look at that, dude. Look at those they, they they look like they could take each other's teeth and just ch interchange them, right? <laughs> totally. So yeah. so anyway, she comes up to me and she's like she comes up. And she's like, oh, my God, you're so funny. I'm like, thank you. She starts talking to me. She's like, uh, your retard bit is so funny. It's so I'm like, OK, now now I like you even more. OK, you're very cool. She goes, are you friends with Tim Dillon? I go, yeah. Oh, my God. I'm like, dude, what if Tim Dillon's gay ass gets me to laid? Wouldn't that be hilarious? <laughs> Like a fat gay guy gets me to bang a Viking. Your wingman, he wasn't even there, and he's yeah. not even straight. In spirit, Amazing. in spirit, yeah. in spirit. That's crazy. You think that's happened before? I feel like it's one of those things that's never happened in the history what, of humanity. That, uh, somebody Tim getting Dillon's, laid from knowing Tim Dillon. I feel like that's something that's never happened. I don't know. Tim Dillon's pretty funny, and he's got a huge following, and I'm sure he's got some chicks that just anyone who knows him, they just love it. So good for yeah, Tim and if Dillon. If you want to fuck Tim Dillon, right? You're not. It ain't then, happen, yeah, a woman, then you're you know? a gay guy. Yeah, yeah. What I'm saying is, I'm like, sure and there's some woman. chicks who think their 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 package could flip Tim. Like he'll suddenly be like, and "I'm they, over dicks, strictly gash." They probably could too. I, I believe that kind of thing. I wonder if there's that. We should create a. We should create um, a, a a reality show where you go. You we know you love butt. But try vagina. Just try. Just try vagina one time. Just watch this gay porno. Get hard. Stick it in here and tell me which one's Bring the in, best. Bringing like the hottest sex worker we yeah, can find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah smoking yeah, hot yeah, sex yeah, worker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to, dude, when I was in like uh, middle school and Dennis Hoff's Bunny Ranch was on HBO, I would just go to his website and look at the women on the Bunny Ranch website and like pick out which one that I, you know, if I ended up at the Bunny Ranch someday that I would go to oh, when, I was, when I was in middle school. Have you ever been to one of those? No. When I went, I was, I went to college and one time my buddy's like, Did you go? We should go. And I'm like, Okay, let's go. So we really? drive out. Yeah. So we drive out and, and dude, it's really crazy because you sit down and they just present yeah, themselves. Yeah, yeah. It's like that scene from uh, Enter the Dragon. Where like he goes to fight that uh f fight on that island and basically like they all arrive and they get their pick of the of of the litter and he's like I'll take you I'll take you and I'll take you <laughs> remember but, so that, so here's the crazy thing so we go out there we talk I mean I meet a I meet a this chick I'm like I'm not gonna do this we really? just end up talking so yeah. you, was she pissed that you did that no we just talked but then I found out that my buddy this fat guy who's in my fraternity nobody would bang him oh. Oh, wait, at the bunny ranch? Yeah, they're like, I it's that not happening. A, I thought you had the money. You got laid. No, that? they wouldn't bang him. I don't know oh, what was man. wrong with his dick. I don't know. What if it was just too big? What if he had like a 12-foot you know, donger, dude? And Ellen's like, I, I don't, I, we don't have health insurance here. 
<laughs> if I end up in the ER, I got to pay for it myself. I can't believe you didn't go for it. Yeah, dude. I don't know, man. Even when I did like the the naughty show, I never ever really took any shots at the porn stars. It's just not me. I like filth by choice. I like those who do it for the love of the game. That I mean, you could argue that the those women there are the, the ult, I mean, that's like a professional basketball player. When it comes you know with a blatant paycheck, it's just not the same. Yeah. Half the reason I liked it when I back before I became celibate. Okay. I can't believe you're saying that. I, 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 uh, my biggest thing was I just like to, uh, I just like to, um, the hunt was more important than the actual, like, getting laid. Oh, I can relate to that. 100%. You know, it's just fun to, like, like, when you get laid, you're like, oh my God, she's let me hit it. That's so crazy. She, she, she believed me. Yeah. <laughs> she believed me. 100% get that. It's dude. so nuts to me. So, anyways, so she takes off, you know, all of a sudden, these three Mexicans of your pants or what? No, okay. no, no, not bad. celibate Sam. Okay, so um, so then these three Mexicans, two of them are like six four. One of them looks like Mexican Super Mario. Okay, so they start coming up and talking to me like, "Bro, we love your show, bro." The little Me the Super Mario Mexican, okay, very aggressive. Turns out he ate all the mushrooms. He ate all the mushrooms to the point it was beyond tripping balls. It was more tweaking. That's how high on shrooms he was. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. Oh, and when you're a tiny, aggressive guy. Oh, I think I sat behind these guys. Yeah, dude. They're tall dudes? Uh-huh. There's one. Oh, yeah, yeah. And does one of them have long hair? Yes. Yeah, I think I they, sat behind them. They went guys. to both shows then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this was after the second I, show. Because they, they were really loud, like, and just pointing at the stage a lot. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. They, they ate both shrooms, Mexican, yeah. and the little guy ate more shrooms than everybody else. Okay? I definitely sat behind them. So he ate all the shrooms. So he's tr he's like, dude, one of the bouncers is just walking up to his car because it's the end of the night, and he's just aggressively flipping him off, like <laughs> like tw tweaking balls so badly. I'm like, bro, you, you did got mushrooms wrong, bro. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, dude, you went too far. You went too far. He's like straight off some adult swim cartoon where you're like, dude, tweaky Mexican on mushrooms. On like some weird kind of uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force character. Eyes like saucers, yeah. Dude, just crazy. And he's like, no, no, no. He's doing that. No, nah, no. Nah. Oh, wow. And I'm like, bro, you got. So anyways, I look over and there's Eddie Bravo. And he's surrounded by 10 plant people. And I just want to tell him he did great, crushed, love him. So I, I, leave, I leave the tweak in Mexican. Well, I don't realize he's like following in my drift. Like you know, kind of like uh, when NASCAR, like yeah. when you're trying to find follow an ambulance who's like getting everybody out of the way, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and you just kind of follow yeah. through. Yeah. So I I'm leading. He just following me, like aggressively, like gyrating, right? Like <laughs> super duper tweaky mushroom Mexican gyrating dude right behind me. But now I'm with a bunch of killers. It's all black belts, brown belts, purple belts. And he's got tweaky energy. He's so high, he sees Eddie Bravo, loves Eddie Bravo, but can't express how much he loves Eddie Bravo because he's tweaking his mushroom balls off. Yeah. And he's like, oh, you know, that. <laughs> and so I have to hostage negotiate a situation so that they don't, because they got the fight eyes on now. Yeah. Uh oh. This, this is a very aggressive Super Mario character right now. Do not get down. Huh, ha, no, he's, he's pointing. I'm like, bro, you got to chill. I go, he's tripping balls on shrooms. He's tiny. Did he tell you that? that he was tripping? Oh, yeah, oh, they yeah. all did. And then, of course, his two giant friends are like glaciers slowly moving this <laughs> way because they're tripping balls, too, and they don't know what to do. So then Giovanni was there. He, he, he's like got fight eyes, but he knows something. I go, dude, he's just tripping massive balls. You, That's hilarious. Like, don't choke him out. So they all, like, kind of talk him down. Buddy, it's okay. You're okay. And then the giant Mexicans came and grabbed the tiny Mexican and took him away. That's it was so, so crazy, bro. It was so crazy. It was so crazy. Good for, good for those guys. Got to meet their heroes. Yeah. So, and then Dana threw up and... Shit all over the place, but that what was, was she shit? Oh yeah, she because because Dana 
Dana, Dana was drink, Dana likes to have a couple beverages oh, that yeah. night. I've noticed. Yeah, yeah that she night sent that, me a text that was incomprehensible. She after. works hard. She yeah. works really hard. The sweet. She sent me the sweetest text that I didn't understand at all. Okay, I'll let's hear it. Hold on. It was like, uh, let me see if I can find it. Where was it? Uh, is it Sam? Sam and Dana. Here we go. Uh, thanks for coming. I hope you had a great Yimi. Danielle, I'm deary. Sorry, it's. <laughs> crazy right <laughs> well you see soon thank and then that was it that's it right there what she's trying to say i could read it one more time now i speak fluent Thanks for coming i hope you had a great yimmy <laughs> danielle i'm deary sorry it's crazy right <laughs> well you see soon thank Hey, so I didn't say hi to Danielle. I felt bad about that because I was running you waved around. waved as you were walking away. Yeah, yeah. and I even went, Danielle! Oh, no! yeah, 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 yeah. That's how she understands. It was very busy. We were, I mean, it was. Like keeping the train show. on the tracks, yeah. everyone running the light, just running the light. <laughs> yeah, I noticed. The that. show was supposed <laughs> to be done at 9.30. Really? Oh, yeah, wow. it went to 10.15. 10 yeah, the almost, next like, show was supposed later. to start at 10.30. Somehow they flipped that thing in 30 minutes. They did so well the comedy store. So basically what she's saying is basically great to see you guys. Sorry I didn't get to say hi, Danielle. Crazy show, right? Come by again next time. We'd love to have you. That's basically what she's saying. <laughs> I think you're right. Yeah, that, That's the energy I got from it. But Dana's great. Once she gets high, it's over. It's she like, shits herself? Is that what happens? No, no, no. She shits uh, all over the place? No, I was only joking about that. She you weren't joking, clearly. She didn't shit herself, You're but she did throw up. And she shit somewhere. No, in the potty. Okay, you you didn't make up that detail. That's something that happened that you're trying she to didn't shit, uh, withdraw dude, from right I'm now. Gonna, you're going to have to edit this out because she's going <laughs> to yell at me for this shit. She doesn't listen. Yeah, but someone's going to go, you know, he said she did not shit herself, Johnny. She threw up. She shit somebody else's pants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's my snuck into her house the ghost shit her pants <laughs> johnny we have a ghost in our house okay and by the way my daughter whenever anybody comes over they instantly become uncle oh really that's cute so it was, oh, cute. It was very weird johnny you sat next to the original johnny which was Scott. Yeah, I met him a few times. He's a swell guy. I like that dude. Scott is a good dude. Scott is uh, his yoga instructor, uh, Mexican girlfriend. They were there, and they sat next to you guys, and it was kind of cool, my past with my present. <laughs> and uh, he came to the second show. He stayed another time, and uh, he, he was great. Scott's great. That's a true story when he said he was narcoleptic. I thought oh, I like, remember that. Yeah. like to have sex with dead people. Yeah, that's a great joke, too. Yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah, so so uh, that was that night. It was Didn't laughing make him go to sleep too? Oh yeah. yeah, the funniest thing. So he finally meets my daughters. They're like, oh, you know, goes is like Uncle Scott. I'm like, she yeah. calls everybody Uncle Scott, and she so so we're walking around right. I, we're just trying to catch up. She's trying to tell him a story about zombies. And so he's meeting my daughters for the first time. I'm walking my daughters on a double bike. And she's like, Dad, Dad, I'm trying to talk right now. I'm talking to Uncle Scott. Please let me finish my story. So the thing about Scott, Scott is narcolepsy, right? And we used to call some, uh, I talk about this on my show, which is knock out the narco, which is you would make him laugh so hard that he would just fall asleep. That's crazy. So, but... Like one of those goats. He know? couldn't drive for the long time because he had narcolepsy, narcolepsy. But they made so much advancements that he's now legally allowed to drive because he's on like this thing that makes sure he doesn't have any of those things. I bet he's on some shit, dude. Like some real shit. That, yeah, he's like got to be on some real heavy shit. Heavy medicine. But it was so funny to me because I go, "How do you drive? What if you have? What if you have a uh, a uh, 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 situation. He goes, oh, I haven't had one in like eight years. So anyways, we're walking around, dude. And I go, you know, everybody ages. Like, I mean, but I've aged well. And he goes, no, dude, you look old as fuck. And then I, I'm walking. I'm like, he's, not, he's over there just going. He's like, <laughs> sit. 
He knocked himself what out. Did he, he was walking? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And what, did he laughing sl- so slump hard. down or he was standing? How does that work? Yeah, he's standing there going, and he just looks like he's like this. Oh, he's trying to like wake up. Yeah, he's trying. But he doesn't fall down. No, so but he just stands there like laughing with his like weird. That's so creepy. Yeah, it's so. I would fun. love to it's see called that. Knock dude. out the narco. We, gotta, we used to do we that all the time. That, we also we used to do that all the time. That's great. Yeah, it was it, it was great, dude. Yeah, but what is he? So he, he just has to what listen to NPR all day while driving around right? because you don't want to get too tickled that you you know yeah, something you funny can't, happens. You can't. You can't. For yeah. sure. For sure. So that was great. Comedy Chaos. We had our 80th sold out show. That's great. That's which is fun. great. My goal is 20 more, then call it a day. <laughs> Twenty more sellouts and I'm out. That's such a good that's the goal. I'd you're, love to go. You're out saving to, LA comedy by booking that show. You I'm trying. Well, everybody, I don't even want to get into it. It's just like so obvious that they jack my lineups now. Like if you get on my show, my show is the Underground Railroad to do everybody else's show. So, anyways, so we uh, I I spent last weekend. We went we went Cleveland, Pottstown, Pittsburgh. Okay, so uh. I, I, we stay in. Did you already look at the Cleveland? Did we already talk about this? Oh yeah, when we were on a TFH live. But we stayed at something called like yeah, we the Cleveland Hyatt. It's one of the most gorgeous yep. things. But they had no. The coffee shop there closed at four. I don't know what psychopaths closed coffee at four p.m. Who wants coffee after four o'clock? Uh, this guy oh. who's addicted. I drink coffee all day. I'm drinking coffee right now, and we'll, we have a, 10 more minutes of show before that's we psycho, all go home. That's psycho behavior. Your psycho behavior. It's almost 11 p.m. if you're listening at home. Yeah. It's 10.48 p.m., and he's all drinking right. coffee. So, so anyways, we, uh, we, we go, and, and so I can't find coffee. So I'm going to walk around uh, Cleveland trying to find a coffee shop. Mm-hmm. And we're in this nice little area. It's where the... Hilarities is it's a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous area of Cleveland. It's very you like walking around anyway, creeping. Uh creep are gonna creep, bro. Creep are gonna creep. You know? So I start walking around. I uh I get a I, I, I go around and like everywhere I go in, everyone shuns me. They're like, no, no, nothing. Go, get out. No. I'm like, what? What do you mean they shun you? <laughs> they shun and I'll what? get into it. So I'm walking around in my like purple. 10th planet sweatshirt hoodie with a hat on. What I don't know is that is the uniform of the Cleveland homeless people. That is how they dress. (laughs) It's cold out. Everyone would have like winter jackets on. Homeless people walk around in a hoodie with a hat on. I am officially in the uniform of the local homeless. (laughs) So every time I walk in, everyone gets really fucking weird, right? Yeah. And the homeless are very aggressive. They'll sing in your face for money. Sing? Yeah. This guy was singing drill music to me. What's that about? Is that because the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is Yeah, but it's like aggressively in your face. That's weird. So I'm walking around trying to find coffee. I go to this one place. I go, do you guys sell coffee? He's like, she's like, yeah. I'm like, can I get some? She's like, yeah, hurry up. I go, what? Why do I got to hurry up? We don't, she's like, we don't serve homeless people. I go, who's homeless? <laughs> I'm not homeless. She goes, then why are you dressed like a homeless person? I go, I'm wearing a sweatshirt. This is lavender purple. What kind of homeless guy walks around in lavender? I I didn't want to say anything, Sam, but you have been uh, looking a little homeless lately. Really? Yeah. I feel like I'm looking great. Just a little unkempt. So anyways, I grab my coffee. They got no almond milk. I go, I grab, I'm walking down the street back to my my hotel. I see like one of these like super like uh what hipster um like uh sandwich shops. So you're a homeless person ordering almond milk in your in So your I coffee. walk in, right? I go, hi, how's it going? And they both stare at each other like, oh no, he's inside. I go, <laughs> I go what is going on here? That's so fucking I go, funny. I go, I go. Do you guys make coffee? They go not for today. I go not for today. I go hold on. You you made you did you don't make coffee for today. When did you make coffee for? They go we I'm, we don't have coffee. I go okay. Do you have do you <laughs> do you have almond milk? They go yeah. I go can I get some? They go no. We don't sell. I go you don't sell. You don't put almond milk 
in the coffee. They go, oh yeah, we do. I go, can I get some? I go, I'm tipping you $2. Can I get, uh, they're like, I don't know. I go, dude, I'm not homeless. They go, what? I go, I'm not homeless. I'm ordering almond milk. Like what, what kind of homeless guy is worried about their, their being lactose intolerant? <laughs> Uh, okay, so we're funny. sorry. Just you're dressed like the homeless people. I go. I'm wearing a lavender purple. I wish sweater. I could see this thing. I would like to. We need to get a picture of you in your outfit for Cleveland. I think it's good. You got your head covered, right? And your haircut is kind of the the slickest thing about you. It's yeah. like your best feature. As oh, far and as the rest of it is looks like I live outside. Well, it's the thing that sets you apart from the homeless. Most I would say. Oh, it's is my and, slick and if haircut. If you cover it up with a weird hat or something, yeah, then I could see it. Yeah, you you have a rough look about. Okay. It. Like you, you have world weary eyes. I'll say that. Okay, I got what world weary eyes. I would say. You know, you've seen a lot of shit. Okay, you know I mean? okay, okay. You're okay. like a veteran coming back from a war, maybe. Okay. Like I got PTSD. Yeah, a little PTSD. Yeah, I don't okay. know what PDSD Respe is. Is that something to do with Puff Daddy or something? Yeah, it's as if you dated Puff Daddy, you get PDSD. That's what. You so hold on, what what is it? P PTSD, post traumatic. And stress you said disorder. I'm saying what? You said PDSD. Okay, Johnny. Okay, just you helping you I'm out, saying. man. Don't you want to know? No, I don't want. Oh, to. I won't tell you next time. Thank I'll you. let you keep saying stupid shit. Yeah, thank you. Thank I you. meant to comment on that. I see. I don't do that on tinfoil, but I feel comfortable oh, doing that on broken. By sand. the way, I t forgot to tell you about com uh, comedy chaos. In the second show, somebody came and gave me this skank fest shirt of me as a human pinata. They made that. Yeah, that's crazy, dude. How cool is that? They made that shirt for you. Yeah, and they were waiting in line. They're like, Ellis hey, Mania. What hey, does it say there on the side? Ellis Mania on the other side, the green and the gr other side, Sam. Where? What does that say in green right there? Uh, Token Tony Designs. So it oh, must be the guy who made it. it. Okay, shout out Token Tony. Yeah, and like it's such a yeah, the human pinata dog. That's cool, man. I did. Yeah, thank you guys. So I I walked them, I walked them in early. Oh, you did? That's yeah. Cool. So I'm like, okay, come sit inside. Make Sam a t-shirt. Get in early. Yeah, 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 yeah. So so we do that. We do Cleveland Crush. Great. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we get on the plane, okay, mm -hmm. and Johnny, this D okay. So we're on a plane. We're we're going from Cleveland to Philadelphia, okay. Okay. The plane's running late. Okay, the plane is running late. Uh, no, 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 no. This is this is okay. So we fly into Pottstown. We're gonna do Pottstown. Pottstown Soul Joe's great club. You know, Joel is the shit. He's running a great club. I was thinking about like we should do like a com we should do a comedy festival in this place. Cause he has like three or four he has like four rooms. We could do shows in different places. How far is that from major the metro? Philadelphia an hour. All right. Well just let me just let me dance. Okay. I think you brought that up before when we talked about it. So so we're doing it. And you know, we do the first show. Everybody crushes. Great show. A lot of fun. Afterwards, we did, it was one hour of photos. Handshakes and photos. Mm -hmm. Greet me. An hour. That's, That's how many people wait in line. Blessings. Blessings. So this couple comes up to me. Well, you know what was really weird? This one couple comes up. They're both drinking beer, and she's like, we're pregnant. I'm like, okay, that's like a little weird. <laughs> Should I say something? Fetal alcohol, lady? You can't say something. <laughs> it's so I like did I ever tell you the time I went and watched a UFC fight and this good looking tattoo couple, the guy who does all these tattoos, and his wife was sitting next to me and she's full on pregnant, drinking a beer. And like the waitress is like, I can't serve you anymore. I am uncomfortable. <laughs> You're they're legally allowed to though, but you just can't. Drink she didn't want to, right? Like, are you allowed to serve? Is that legal? Do you know to serve? Ask, a ask if you're legally allowed to serve pregnant women beer. Let me ask ChatGPT, our friend. ChatGPT, ask the questions. You just, you just de derailed your own story, by the way. I want to. No, no, you out. derailed no, it. You said that you said another time in another show, somebody else was pregnant. Okay, um, we're just asking questions okay. here, Johnny. Was uh, I know, but you blame me for derailing your stories when it's usually you. No, uh, uh, Johnny. Was what I said to you is let me work these bits. Is it legal for uh, to serve alcohol? Would you say to serve? Yeah, alcohol, alcohol to pregnant women. To 
pregnant women. In many places, it is legal to serve alcohol to pregnant women. However, laws and policies can vary by region. In the U.S., for example, refusing to serve alcohol to a pregnant woman can be seen as a form of discrimination oh, under the gee. Americans with Disabilities Act. Yeah. Like we've said on the show, it's a new year. It's 2024. Don't start your new year by putting off important things like shopping for life insurance. Start the year knowing you found the right life insurance policy to protect your family with Policy Genius. Getting life insurance today means you'll have peace of mind for the rest of the year and beyond. So if something were to happen to you, your family can cover expenses while getting back on their feet. Luckily, Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies, and their team of licensed experts is on hand to talk you through it. I've talked about this before, and so has Sam. It was a huge load off his shoulders when he got life insurance on himself to make sure that his daughters are cared for in the event of his early demise. Policy Genius's technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks to find your lowest price. Even if you already have life insurance through your work, it may not offer enough protection for your family's needs, and it may not follow you if you leave your job. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius has licensed, award winning agents who can help you find the best fit for your needs. They work for you, not life insurance companies. That means they don't have an incentive to recommend one insurer over another so you can trust their guidance. No wonder they have thousands of five star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. Save time and money and give your family a financial safety net with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash broken or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash broken. So, so we're doing a show. We're do so the first show is, um, the first show is, oh, so, so during the meet and greet, the great grandson of Admiral Byrd was there. Really? He's like, my grandfather, my great grandfather was Admiral Byrd. No kidding. Yeah, I'm like, oh, uh, can I interview you? <laughs> yeah, but think about how Johnny, far it, it gets fall. crazier. I'll ben tell that? you. Okay. Oh, wait till you see it. So, so we do the show. This couple comes up to us. They're like, they're like, hey, we're like, oh man, we're expecting our sixth baby, and th she's not drinking. We're sixth? Actually, I think she was drinking too. What this, the I don't fuck know. Is I don't this know. Place? This is really weird. But she's, oh no, they're like, we have six kids. I'm like, good for you. They were farmers, right? That so they had sense. six kids. They were farmers. She wasn't pregnant. This is another woman. She wasn't pregnant at the time. She, she, they were partaking of beverages. Having a good time. So we start the meet and greet. For some reason, uh, we start the Q&A at, at the second show. Pretty packed house. We're answering questions. The farmers ask a question. And they go, are you farming? And we go, what? They go, are you farmers? We go, no. They go, why? I go, because we're not farmers. They're like, why aren't you farming? And then it starts to get really aggressive. And then... Eddie goes, because we're not farmers. That's why we don't farm. They're like, why aren't you doing your part? And we're like, what? And like, yeah, you're up here talking about we're trying to save humanity. Why aren't you guys farming and doing something? And we're like, hold on, dude, chill out. So Eddie walks over and he goes, guys, calm down. We're all trying to, no, man, you guys are always talking this shit about doing something and you're not farming. Why aren't you farming? I go, we go, we're, what do you, they go to me, what are you doing? I go, I have a podcast, you're here for yeah. it. I talk a lot of shit about the lizard people. Everyone cheers. And the, then they got rude. And, and Eddie's like, calm down. We're all, we're all on the same team here. They're like, fuck you. You guys, you. Wow. you're not farmers. You're not doing anything. And they go, oh, and Benjamin was right. And they walk out. And I'm like, what? Those are people looking to get pissed off. Yeah, I mean, but it's so weird. And then I'm, I forgot to tell you something. When they were, when they were like, we're farmers. I think what teed them off, Johnny, was they go, oh yeah, they have six kids. He turned her vagina into a t-shirt gun. <laughs> I think they did not enjoy that joke. 
You know what that is, dude? And I, I said this uh, when we were talking about this earlier today. I think you have a podcast, one of the few podcasts in this red pill community, whatever you want to call it, that is a comedy podcast. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you have a lot of people that are showing up at your shows thinking like, you know, this is a conspiracy kind of show. You know, you get what I'm saying? Maybe yeah. not expecting yeah. like the comedy part yeah. of it, the modern. Well, it's very weird because the stand up part is all dick jokes. And yeah. then the then the Q&A is all conspiracy. Yeah, like you, Eddie's you know doing I mean? like, like, 10 like there minutes. aren't many comedy conspiracies. Most of the conspiracies are serious, <laughs> and I think we're everybody's talking about how Chris uh, De Stefano is uh, getting in conspiracies. I want him on this podcast so badly. On Tempo? Yeah, yeah, be a good guest. Yeah. yeah, he would. I'm like, come on, get it, get it. He's doing it, man. Let's go. So, anyways, Johnny. So we do that. We do the show. We almost have a fight break out. This fight's almost break out. Some guy in the back who looks like. Zach De La Rocha's f- cousin. He gets in a fight with a, a guy who looks like a lumberjack because he wouldn't shut up. They're almost f- weird energy, right? And I'm all for it, dude. I love chaos. The more chaos, the better. Packed house, good time. We do it. So so now we're going from Pottstown to, to Pittsburgh. We, we, we... Our our flight is at nine o'clock, right? Let's say it's at nine o'clock. I don't remember the exact time. So at we night? get up early in the morning. So we get there, and as soon as we get there, they tell us our plane is an hour late. So we're like, okay. Then they move it another hour late. So now we're two hours late for a... To, okay, I, I forgot to tell one story. On the flight from from Cleveland to Pittsburgh, we have this elderly black woman as our flight attendant. And it was like having the Oracle work. She's like, she's like oh, Mr. Tripoli, <laughs> let me tell you, your energy is amazing. Is there anything I could... That's how she talked to everybody the whole time. You're in economy? It was like one of the smaller planes because they're only hour oh, flights. Yeah. You do those smaller flights. Yeah. This woman worked the room like I've never seen. Oh, like she was getting tips. Girl, or something. Yeah, that's great. you you deserve it. You worked hard. Good job on that. I'm sorry. Okay, here you go. Do you have yeah. anything else you want to throw out? And she's like, so at the end, she's like, <laughs> let's let's. I just realized you were talking about trash. Let's <laughs> let's let's. let's Let's give it up for your flight attendant. They work. They got you up. They got you down. They got you. And we're like, yeah. <laughs> and then they're like, the, the pilot got on like, and let's give it up for Miss Janet. And the place exploded. She gets like a standing. Oh, I'm telling you. Somebody was who was hired before the agenda of making people hate flying. Yeah, was, 100%. Uh, yeah. Installed. Worked the room. Probably made a little money on the side. I should, probably should have tipped her. So now we're flying. Philadelphia to Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. All right. This flight's two hours late. The flight gets in two hours late. We take off. The flight up is like, this is the plane. The whole way. Yeah. It's been going really there, windy. going there, flying, going down. It's been really windy. Yeah. So we land. We land. And they get on the and, and they get on the intercom. They're like, "Give it up for your all female flight crew." I'm like, "You should have to tell people that before they get on the plane. You were two hours late. There's nothing to brag about." <laughs> and you just slammed the plane into the ground. You just like, slammed oh. the plane. I almost threw up because it was like <laughs> going down. It's it like was- that woman going around twi- Twitter today. Did you see that about? So she's like, uh, I didn't let failing the flight test stop me from having a thriving career at United. And it was just like short, fat black woman. Yeah, and people were yeah, like, yeah. This is criminal. Yeah. How's that legal? How well, can apparently, you- it was, the test she failed is a test that like. Twenty percent of people fail, like that, and that end up getting passed eventually. But it's like the flight chest, not the actual written test. Which I want if they're passing anything, I want yeah, them to pass the flying I test. I don't care if you can do it a uh, uh, multiple choice question. Yeah. Can you land the plane, it's lady? The check flight, I think is what they like, say. Like, what are they doing? Like, it's they don't want you flying. 
They want those numbers up too. Those they don't numbers. want you flying. So the the show went great. Balt uh, Pittsburgh was great. These guys at La Lo Louvre beer, they were great. It was a great show. We packed it out. Low Lev beer. Yeah, yeah we packed. It was like our best weekend ever. Love Lev beer. Love Lev beer. Guys doing there, putting together. They're trying to open a comedy club in Pittsburgh. Good people. So the show gets done. We do the Q&A after. Mm -hmm. We decided to switch it up. We were going to do two stamp shows because Eddie wasn't going to come with me to Pittsburgh. It was just going to be me and Xavier, and I was going to do two stand-up oh, shows. Huh? So he ends up going, and he did want to do two stand-up shows in a row. So we're like, let's just do Q and A, because we'd like to do it. Do stand-up the first show, second show, Q and A. Mm -hmm. And we started doing Q and A, and um, so we get done. We take pictures, and this woman. So somebody asked me about um, uh, nine eleven and Operation Northwoods. And I start going off on like, you know, you really want to talk about no Operation Northwood, we break down what is Operation Northwoods. And then we go take a look at the Challenger blowing up and like the the rubber room. Have you ever heard of the rubber room, Johnny? Mm -mm. So the rubber room is this chute where you could, sh if you think something's about to explode on a shuttle, you can shoot down into the what they call this rubber room. Oh, really? fully and sealed. Yeah, look it up. NASA Space Shuttle Rubber Room. Uh, nobody knows about it. Somebody brought it up to me. Go, is this where they went? So, anyways, Johnny, rubber room bunker. Yeah, rubber room bunker. Rubber room is the nickname given to. It's funny. I did space camp, and I didn't even know about this. Yeah, Johnny, because uh, you're too busy clinching your butt cheeks trying not to shit for a week. Rubber room is the nickname given to the emergency egress bunkers located 40 feet beneath the launch pads. Oh, this is at Kennedy Space Center. This is at the launch center. Let me. Uh, hold on. Um, let's see. I don't. These. It doesn't say these are on the shuttle, though. It's no, no, no. The it's bunkers. At, it's at the bunker below the, the oh, oh, where okay. it takes I off. I thought you meant this were in the shuttle. Yeah. Okay. No, no. I got you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, so, oh, dude, this is such a crazy ass video, dude. This is so nuts. Well, and anyway, you have such ADD. What are you doing? So, so, anyways, so, so, I, I tell the whole story about that. I'm taking pictures at the end. Now, you got to understand something about. Pittsburgh's very interesting mm -hmm. because, like, a lot of these blue collar cities were built on like blue collar jobs are now hipster cities, and Pittsburgh's great, but it's like it's it's very hipsterish, Pittsburgh, which is fine. Really? Wow, right? Which is fine. That. I don't care. It's great. I, they're a great crowd. Tiny bit sensitive, but great crowd. She comes up to me. She goes, "I I have to talk to you about something." She goes. My cousin died on the shuttle. I go, what? She goes, yeah, she died on the shuttle. I go, which one? Can you bring it up, Johnny? Can you bring up the... Uh, which one? The Challenger? The Challenger that exploded the flight or crew. Columbia, okay. Challenger or Columbia? Yeah, I, which one was the big one that everyone talks about? I mean, there was two. There was Columbia and Challenger. I think the Challenger, right? I, I get I mean, I don't know. I mean, the one with the teacher is... Yeah, the one with the teacher. But Columbia, it was 2003, and then Challenger was in the 80s. 80s, Challenger. Okay. Uh, Can you find, like, their, what, the, the teacher? The <clears throat> yeah, who was it? The These desk. The people right here. Where was it? No. Judith Resnick. That's her. That one. Okay. She says, this is my cousin. Good looking woman. Judy Resnick. She goes, that's my cousin. She's dead. I go, well, have you seen the woman who is at Yale, I think it is, or Harvard? She goes, no. And like, I just didn't want to press her. Mm -hmm. But 100%. Have you ever looked at, are, is she still alive? Yeah. I mean, I, I've seen pictures of that woman. Yeah. yeah. And like, they talk the exact same way. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't, this is. These are a stretch for me. I got to be honest with you. Uh, the the look alike things. I, yeah, well, uh, you're dead. There's to me. just infinite people in the world, but it is weird that they have the same name. Same I, uh, name and the bizarre. same smile, and they talk with the sa their hands the same way. Yeah, right. no, I mean, yeah, it's weird. But I mean, I, I saw that guy, that guy they went and confronted, 
And he seemed convincing to me, like saying, "Like, dude, I get it. I look like him. It's not me. I got the same name to him. It's like unbelievable." Like, why would they change? They they'd have to be retards not to change their name. Yeah, but so. you understand the internet wasn't there at the time. Yeah, but they. I mean, still, yeah, they had phone her. books. They had phone yeah, books. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, Professor Law, she's trying to tell me that's not her. It's like get out of here. Alumna of the month. Get out of here. And she, they, like, Let's if you see, watch their she... mannerisms when they talk, they talk the exact same way. She would have graduated 75, uh, 40, 50, 60. She would have been like 25 when she was graduating from whatever this was, school of law. So that's about right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, anyways, Matches is up. that kind of crazy? Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's what happens when you talk about dead people not being dead. Sometimes people that know them are going to show up. Is that, say, but a, that's a second family member? So weird. So what do you mean? Two family members of people I've talked about on the show were at my shows. The great grandson. Oh, of, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, a bird. Yeah, yeah. That, that is weird. Wow, that, yeah. that's kind of crazy. All right. Are you related to anybody who we have famously said was uh, actually still yeah, oh, alive? Oh yeah, call Please, in. Yeah, call Tell in. us, us if we suck. <laughs> so, anyways, the last story I got to tell you. Um, the last story I got to tell you is so funny. We were in Dallas Airport. They were still celebrating Christmas. I saw that picture on your, your Instagram, dude. It's hilarious. That's like, it's too late now. Yeah, yeah. Move this. Well, that, that's just somebody's too lazy to take and then, it then that, Oh, Johnny, by the, by the way, uh, did you see where they said somebody contacted the contracted? Is it contract? A disease if you contract you? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, measles? Do you see the airport? I saw that, yeah. Yeah, where did yeah. they say? It was what, what some DC airport. Dallas. Dallas. Where was I? Uh -uh. Dallas. An extremely contagious form. <laughs> and you cough right after that. Wow. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm dying. Does measles make you cough? I don't know. I looked that up, Johnny. Yeah, those, let's see the symptoms of measles. Um, the symptoms of measles are cold like symptoms such as runny nose, sneezing, nope. and a cough. Okay, everything. Sore, a cough. red eyes that may be sensitive to light. No. Nope. Watery eyes. No. Nope. Swollen eyes. No. Nope. Uh, a high fever, uh, super shitty attitude, and uh, <laughs> long stories that go overly nowhere. Ag overly aggressive haircut for his age. Talking about <laughs> so rude, dude. Graying around the chin. Yeah. Uh, small grayish white spots in the mouth. Yeah. yeah reminiscent yeah, yeah. of jism. Uh, aches and pains. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. 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 Loss yeah. of appetite. Nope. You're good. Okay. Yeah. It's so funny, dude. Loss of appetite. I'm going to have to look into measles. <laughs> oh, come on, Johnny. Trying to say I'm a fat ass? I was talking about me, but yeah, yeah. Um, sure. Sure, sure. So that's our stories there. That's our stories. And that's the story. Um, The funniest thing, Joe, Johnny, is like I went to watch a Clippers game with my brother when he was in town, and they lost by like 40. Did I tell you this oh, story? No. <laughs> but the funniest thing was that they had these kids doing a dance stuff. They were dancing like... They had them like, like girls. No, like yeah, I think it was girls and boys choreography. And guess how what they were, guess what they were they were uh, dancing to. Couldn't possibly guess. Superman that hoe. <laughs> Super. How old were they? Like, dude, they look like they couldn't be more than like fifth, sixth graders. <sighs> you're like, what are we doing as a society? Super bad now, ho! You know, you're like, what are we doing? Dude, I thought my world was ending in first grade when they made us do line dancing to Achy Breaky Heart. And uh, I, like, remember crying and going to another teacher complaining about having to do it. Yeah. Because it was just me in this class, and it was all girls. And the teacher was really into it looking good, you know, like choreography and stuff. And my hips just don't move like a girl's. Yeah. And she was all oh, about, you got to move your hips. And I'm like, I, I'm a boy. I don't do that. Oh, Johnny, I love that. You rejected gender neutrality. Huh? I got her in trouble. I, yeah. Yeah. I you did. got her in yeah. trouble. Yeah. Now, dude, now you would get in trouble because oh, you know, weren't yeah. accepting your homosexuality. You're right. <laughs> you had totally been totally flipped, right. and they would yeah. have you in a dress and lipstick. Oh, I'd be doing so confused. AK breaky hard. I'd be so confused. I would lose it on somebody. I would lose it. I would lose what do you mean? it. If they made your kid. If they made your boy wear a dress in oh, that, yeah. I no, would. No, I mean, they had us looking pretty stupid, but it wasn't a dress. Oh, were you in like a 10 gallon hat? No, it was a white t shirt rolled up, like the sleeves all the way rolled up, jeans with a red handkerchief, probably in like the Springsteen style in the back yeah. pocket, you know? Yeah. Speaking of cowboys, uh, so I was driving to the show today, and again, like traffic was just weird. There's was like so more bad, people yeah. driving than ever, and I was I was turning, and in front of me was this like blue 
Mercedes Benz SUV. Of, I'd say about 10, 12 years old okay. from the back. You can kind of tell. You can so anyways, that. he's like he's like in front of me and he's going slow. So I just go around him. He's in front. I go around him legally, around him, get in front, go up, go up the entrance. Well, he 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 hits the gas right behind me. I go, like, what is going on with this guy? Gets behind me. I look and I can't tell. It's like all black in there. I look, he comes around the side. I notice his front. The whole front of the Mercedes Benz is gone. The grill is just gone. It lo- it just <laughs> it looks like the, the movie Cars when they talk. It looks like the, yeah, the car's yeah, gonna yeah, start yeah. screaming at just me, two right? Headlights, yeah. yeah, just like two headlights and black. Oh, There's great. nothing there. Yeah. And then he gets on side of me. I look into it. It looks like Blade, the black daywalking vampire, but with a cowboy hat on, flipping oh. me off as he drives by me. Then he proceeds to just like like straight up like fast and furious to shit, running in and out, like weaving through the 101. I'm like, oh God, this guy's nuts. I see those guys sometimes, yeah. All the time. And then the funniest thing is like when they fly by you, and then in like five minutes, there's a giant car crash, and you know it's that motherfucker. Or they get pulled over. Yeah. 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 Or it's- you or the best the best one is when it Traffic stops, and then you end up driving right by them, creeping by them slowly yeah. later, and they're just like, ah, I picked the wrong yeah, lane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's the yeah. best, yeah. yeah. Usually, I have to say I'm the guy weaving, but I'm not that bad. So today, I'm driving sometimes. back from a comp, uh, from uh, Tim Fall Hat, and it went, the second show, Blessings, went was a long episode. People love that. That's great. Yeah, we had almost two hours. Now. But when we get out late... The traffic. traffic could be really congested, which it was. I'm driving home. Uh, I'm on my 6 p.m. Uh, AA meeting, right? And I'm driving. Uh, I see that on the left of me is all open, like a, like a big opening into traffic. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I go to turn. As I'm halfway through, I then hit my blinker, right? Okay. So I got my blinker out. I get in. Suddenly I hear, okay, Baba, no, no, no. Somebody, Uh I'm like, oh, shit. I look back. I can't tell who it is. I think it's a cop. He's on like the mic. He's on like his walkie talkie. You know, next time you got to do that. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm on this. Is he talking to you? Uh, yeah, the guy's like, oh, God, say, listen, dude, you got to use your signals. You got to do this. You don't need to do it. I'm like, okay, dude. Okay. I, I did use my signals. That's why you're not pulling me over. That's got to be why you're not pulling me over. So I, I'm, I'm like, oh, God, can I move back out of the lane so he could just get by me? I, I just want to let this cop by. Yeah, you don't so, want him up your ass. For so it opens up again. I move over. He goes by me. It's a regular truck with just a CB yelling at people. I- <laughs> What a great guy. First, I'm like, you fucking asshole. I want to interview. Like, you should have given your card to him or something. I'm like, like dude, interview that's not a bad idea. Just you should to- carry around cards for a phone number yeah. with your phone, like or maybe your email Call this or number we want to talk yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just for people you want to talk to on the podcast. Yeah, you should yeah, really do that. I yeah. need some... Yeah. yeah, that's not a bad idea, is it? Yeah, just heckle people yeah. in traffic. That's like a Larry Stop David thing. Yeah. That's like you a total Larry put David thing. Your, 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 put your like Instagram live and just be like, <laughs> dude, learn to drive, you dumb. Oh, dude, now I'm going to do that. <laughs> do it, man. Get your I'm going to get a, a megaphone yeah. and just be like, hey, you in the green car, stop being an asshole. <laughs> Nothing illegal about that, right? It's yeah, be legal. I'm uh, yeah. the traffic heckler. <laughs> You got that white SUV too. Kind of looks like a cop SUV. Yeah, you yeah. Fake okay, you guys, stop being an asshole. Nobody cares. Tesla, learn to drive. I'm gonna get that. <laughs> I'm gonna get that. Do I'm, it, dude. That'd be hilarious. I gotta figure out how to put it on my car. It's just you mounted on the on the uh, the passenger side uh, mirror. You know, they have a little speaker you can mount there. I think. All right, we'll figure that. Talk out. to people. We'll yeah. figure that out. Yeah, let's see how much they are. I'll, I'll check it out for you. Uh, let's see, car. What would you call that? Megaphone. Hundred bucks looks like hundred twenty nine bucks. Hundred watt public address with sirens is what you can get there. Yeah, uh, this one's forty five dollars. Yeah, so not much. You're looking fifty to a hundred bucks can All get right. you into the game there. Sam. I'll get you into. Send me a link, Johnny. You know I'll buy it. You know I'll buy it. Just gotta mount it properly so it doesn't look like bullshit. But yeah. Okay, Johnny. Uh, that's it with stories today. Okay. Um, not you know, bad. What do you mean? Not bad for stories. A lot of no, great stories. yeah, a lot of good stories. A lot of great stories. We've had a we, we've had a busy couple of uh, months here, haven't we? Well, yeah. Um. All right. What is syphilis dawn? What does that mean? Something <laughs> trending. Syphilis dawn. Hashtag syphilis dawn. You want to do fun with stupid? 
Yeah, let's do some fun with stupid. Actually, do it, John. Let's Andy hit. Dear. Let's hit. Uh, let me see if we have a couple reviews real quick. Huh? We haven't done this. Well, if you if you would love to help the show, uh, but you're not a millionaire who can afford to uh, donate thousands of dollars to the cause, uh, please. And if you want to do that, at Johnny. Oh, Lord, Johnny. On Twitter. Uh, what? Johnny. You forgot to bring me something. We have some gifts we got to open. Are they here? Yeah. The first one is from uh, the booker of this show, Mark Steves. So oh, wow. Do you have some music to play for the, the as we reveal? Dana just decides to open these for me. I'm like, you oh, I hate the people. Bed. I hate people opening my mail, dude. Don't open the packages when it says Broken Sim on it. Yeah, I hate it when people open it. So my this is Mark Steves. I'm going to give out his address right now to everybody. Here we go. So the first one out, this is for... Um, Hold on. Uh, uh, we'll do some uh, Mark Steves appropriate music. Johnny, don't be mean. Well, I'm not going to be mean. Johnny, don't be mean. What is it, Johnny? I don't know. It's just some music. I like it. So the first thing he gave us is this. Guardians of the Galaxy. It's yeah. the guy who <clears throat> has the thing to go... Yeah, but he's the guy that we suggested would have been a better character, uh, better actor for the role of Kevin Bacon. Oh, uh, right, of course. On, so. Um, yeah. so should we leave it like this or open it and put him in the bobblehead? That's entirely up to you, Sam. No, Johnny, it is up to you. So we'll do. It. We'll have the people vote. Does this guy make, even though he's not a bobblehead? I don't think bobble people are going to care to vote about whether we should take a toy out of the box. I have to say, I wouldn't even vote for that. Johnny, shut up. <laughs> Take it out. Let's see what it looks like. But I don't want to rip the box. But he rip that it. box. Why? I love ripping boxes. Yeah, but dude, I've been it... doing that since like seventh grade at, at the earliest. Okay, well now it's not worth anything. What if that was like hugely collectible? He's it's like, like dude, bro, you ruined the box. You just wasted seven hundred. Uh, dude, that's seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. I I do like how they've started releasing toys now that were like the toys when I grew up. Yeah. Johnny, look at that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, dude. It should fit nicely up your ass. Dude, look. we have him sit on the Bible. Don't say anything on the Bible. <laughs> That's inappropriate. Really? Sacrilegious, yeah. Really? Why? Don't put anything on the Bible. Okay, how about if he hangs around with the... Uh... Although Mark did say that this is, uh, it's not tinfoil cross, is what he told me in a text message the other day. Oh, yeah, yeah. About tinfoil hat. Yeah, he was, like, getting into that with me. Yeah, It's not tinfoil cross. Yeah, like, oh, this dystopians, this the discordians. I'm like, whatever, dude. You don't want to hear about the Jesus stuff. Anyway. I have the Lord in my life. I don't need you telling me that. Okay, Mark Steves, I know you listen. Mark Steves somehow listens to the podcast. Quicker than it's out. Like he'll be out yeah, for we 40. Get notes from him he'll be the, out in yeah, four yeah. he'll be out in forty minutes and somehow thirty minutes in he'll be like He's on listen two, to the podcast. Two <laughs> X speed, I think he must listen to it, right? Just listen to it so Just, fast. When will they talk about me? It's got probably got AI recapping it for him. <laughs> Break it down. Yeah. Then they discuss Mark Steve's hatred of Christians. Sam, I never said I hated Christians. Mark, they talk about how you're a Nazi on Telegram and how you won't stop Not banning Mark, people. Mark, they are talking about that. He tried to say I made that up. That no, people, they are. I've been hit up by multiple me. people. The The Telegram's down, Mark. That's all I got to say. Telegram's he down. He goes, what, you want people talking shit about you on there? That's yeah, I do, actually. I don't care. I'm sorry. He doesn't have a high-pitched voice. That's a that's Johnny, a slander to Mark. will you please stop? Talking shit about my good friend Mark. I wasn't talking shit. I was saying that I was I aired and and saying and giving him a high pitched voice when I was joking, uh, just then. Uh, uh, you can accessorize the toy later. We're trying no, to do a John, podcast. I am podcasting. All right, thank you, Mark. Your little guy made him. Thank you, Mark. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mark. You're and a thoughtful person. I appreciate it. One more thing in here. There's one more thing. And Mark gave us a book. Oh. Real magic. This is for Johnny. This is for you. This is actually Johnny. On okay. It. All right. I already have this book. All right. That's, All right. That's, there you go. It looks highly flammable. Thanks, Mark. It's uh, it'll work perfectly in the fire. Johnny, place. why are you such a? Uh, deep let's see. Ad? Uh, real magic, ancient wisdom, modern science, and a guide to the secret power of the universe. All right, Johnny. By Dean Radden, PhD, best-selling author of Supernormal. Johnny, this is from Houston, Texas. It's from people called Plunder World. Will you look up? Pl Thanks, Mark. 
Plunder World. Plunder World. Yes. That sounds like it might be a porn site. I have to say. It's not. Plunderworld.com. Okay, it's not. Plunder World, the most underground trading cards ever. So these are trading cards, probably. Yeah, look at these. We just spoiled that. What are these? I would guess trading cards. Here we go. Take a look at them. Magic the Gathering, what do we got? Oh, probably Illuminati cards, maybe. No, I don't know. Look at them. Here we go. One. You're going to throw them? Okay, no, throw I got it. I'm not supposed to catch things. Okay. Um, let me see what we're looking at here. Dear Lord Jesus, if this has any negative uh, vibes on it, yeah, please, please eliminate Jesus, those do not let these negative the vibes that is, that into this studio. Let only studio. the Lord and Jesus reign upon our love. Dear Lord, please forgive Sam Tripoli for doing sarcastic prayers. No, uh, Johnny, that's a real prayer, prayer Johnny. Okay. Um, let's see what we got here. I pray every day. Um, it says. Okay, uh, this card certifies that your set as truly authentic from the producer. It is through your support that Plunder World will continue to spread to spread to minds young and seasoned. Thank you for supporting independent media. Oh, I see. So Plunder World has their own set of trading cards, it would seem. And we have been given a selection of those Ooh. trading cards right here. Let me uh, check this. Oh, they're nice and heavy stock here that they're printed on. Oh, wow, okay. Northwoods document is the first card. What oh, is it? Nice, heavy cards. John Brennan is the second card. Let's see. Uh, oversaw the CIA's use of interrogation Ooh, and cool. suspected Al-Qaeda members. Later denied and ridiculed investigations into the techniques used after getting caught spying on Senate members looking for the Ooh, into the matter. Ooh, that's pretty cool. He later headed the investigation committee into those very actions. No personal sanctions were issued. Brennan promoted the authenticity of the Steele dossier while spying on presidential candidates. All right. The dossier was fabulous. Can I have those? Oh, this is great, yeah. I like that. Oh, fluoride is up next. Oh, so dude, let's do that. That's great. That's pretty cool, dude. You know what we should do? We should take these and shuffle them up and then pull one out every week on Tinfoil Live. Yeah, And let's we'll do just it. dig into it, like, yeah. live there. Here. Let them look. look Prescott so look Bush. Up. Check out Prescott Bush there. He's the next one up for Oh, hold on there. Johnny, do you want to read this? Of course. They're, oh, look who they listed first. They're Johnny and Sam. Of course I'll wow, read it. Wow, they know who show it is. There you go. That's beautiful. Thank I mean, you. they're really attractive. Wonder. I mean, they're thick. You know, really good card stock Johnny, there. You like how you women, you, how you like your women, knowledgeable and thick. Oh, you're damn right, brother. You know me so well, Johnny and Sam. You've been entertaining me for years. The bit on Punch Drunk about the Diaz brothers eating kick cereal still kills me. Uh, I dragged my wife to your show in Houston at the Secret Show. I used to live in Las Vegas and did video work for many casinos. One of my clients was the Venetian. The owner, Sheldon Adelson hired me to record an interview that he arranged with Nightline. Cynthia McFadden conducted the interview and is a total bitch. Uh, Adelson openly admitted to being a raving Zionist. He also funded a school in Summerlin for local children to go to Israel as a support for the military. This was one of the big players in the global chessboard. It felt weird to get a peek behind, a small peek behind the curtain. Enclosed is a set of cards that I made by hand to help shift the culture. For years, I've always wanted a set of cards that collected all of the controversial topics never taught in school. This is the this is only a trial set, and if enough people show interest, then there will be an actual print run made to look like legit trading cards, which those look amazing to me. Uh, these have a few imperfections, but could be co a collector's item someday. Uh, I wish I had enough sets for everyone. I will send more if things go well. For now, Sam and Johnny can thumb wrestle for this set. <laughs> Uh, even if you don't keep them, please hand them to any normie or young person. Oh, we're keeping them, dude. Oh, we're uh, keeping them. We're least, reading them. At least get them uh, to start learning about the world beneath this broken simulation. Uh, I love all the it. best, uh, James at Plunder World. John Check it out at plunderworld.com. James, really I love cool, it. Man. I love it. It was great. Thank you so much. All right, so did you read the, the reviews? My favorite thing about Mark's uh, gift to me is that he's actually, our, uh, my joke about being flammable, he's clearly uh, dropped some weed ash on it because it's already been burned a little yeah. bit. By, the, by the way, I bought all these great books. My daughters just mouth them. Now they're all yeah, you gotta get a you got to get a lock on your door. You're, Sam doesn't I need have to a get door a on his studio. another room. Yeah, but anyways, gotta, let's go. What's next, Johnny? Your backdrop is looking like kind of silly without now the it's, books. Yeah, it's, I, it's looking shelves. dumb. I have to figure out a way to keep her out of there. Um. All right. Uh, we'll just hit a few reviews, uh, and then we'll get in the phone with Stu because we got we got a few stories here. We got to uh, hurry. Raptor. Oh, God. 
But should we skip reviews? Yeah, let's do reviews next time. Let's get into okay, the fun we'll with do stupid. Sam's in a hurry here, so we and go. we'll get into fun with stupid, and then we'll get into odd uh, stories. Self censoring. Oh, not loud enough. There we go. Let's go. Coming at you live from Los Angeles, California, home of stupid. It's fun with stupid. Everybody, we're getting into masks and more masks here on Fun with Stupid, starring Sam Jimmy Lee. We got a lot of stuff about masks in this fun with stupid because it was a great week for masks shit. Uh, so this was uh, this was just more of Bill Nye oh, uh, destroying his legacy. He posted just- this video to Twitter. And it's just, I, I think it's because of some of the other stuff that I'm going to get to right after this yes. that he posted this video. 100%. He's, listen, he's not a scientist. He's not. Yeah, he's a science guy. He's, that's a difference. There's yeah, a difference yeah, there. he's not. People act like he's, dude, I told you when we did, we, when I was at my brother's brewery, he walked in like people freaked the fuck out like, yeah. like Elvis just walked in the building with his turtle head hunchback. <laughs> like, it's so stupid. Yeah, he's got a huge head. Yeah, oh, he does. It's huge. Look at it here. Uh, anyway, here we go. Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. Greetings, Bill Nye here with more on masks. Great Here's joke. a map of the United States. Great joke, Bill. Red yeah. ink shows where people are wearing masks. The black ink shows where people are getting sick with coronavirus. <laughs> I hope you can see the fewer the masks, the more the sick. And there's a perception that a virus Dude, I, I can just travel to the this fibers guy. of a mask like this red dot. Because viruses don't travel by themselves. No, they travel in little droplets of spit and snot. And the fibers are a tangle. So when the I, droplet gets into the fibers of a mask, it gets trapped. This is not that hard to understand, everybody. That's why we have rules about wearing a mask. Now, you know about rules. You pay taxes on the whole road, but you only get to drive on one side at a time. Otherwise, please. <laughs> stop this. I can't so watch everyone, it. So everyone, please wear a mask. Thank you. Oh, you can hear me fine. Right to the mask. Like what? I mean, like. I have no respect for this guy in any way. Bill Nye's a piece. And I tell you, if I did, if my mother wasn't there, I would light that dude up. Bill Nye, the fraud guy, is here, everybody. <laughs> the fucking fraud. Like, dude, that incur- like that guy's such a piece of crap. Like, like he's lying to you. We've already had the data out. That mask don't do anything to you. He's be, he's lying to you. And you just see more and more masks. And what you're realizing is like, there's a lot of people who look smart that are actually dumb. A whole lot. It's like, it's that my blood is boiling from that guy lying to everybody. That actually people look at him like he's some kind of authority, even though he's not. Like, didn't he get, did, isn't he an architecture? Like he's, he's an architect. Uh, what is his degree? He has a uh, Bachelor of Science degree in mechanical engineering. Yeah, he doesn't know anything about viruses. It's like when I got in a fight with this idiot comic named Mo Mandel one time, his dick doctor wife yelling at me about fucking COVID. I'm like, dude, just because you got something, uh, just because you got a degree in this doesn't mean you know that. You know his job was after college? He worked for Boeing. Flight system. Oh, gee, surprise. Yeah. You great? work for the military industrial complex that's also owned by the big pharmaceuticals. Unbelievable. Never happened. Uh, so that was all on the heels of Fauci uh, yeah. testifying this week. Now, yeah. He had to testify behind closed doors, uh, which was a funny thing that they wouldn't let this be a public testimony. Yeah. But his his quote, and let me just hold on. All right. So here it is. Uh this is the headline from Fox. Fauci admits social distancing not based on science. Sort of just appeared, was yeah, his quote. Like, I love that. Just appeared. Dr. Anthony Fauci, the public face of U.S. coronavirus pandemic response, told lawmakers this week that the social distancing recommendations forced on Americans sort of just appeared and were likely not based on scientific data. Uh, so there was that. And then, and this was maybe my favorite video of the week, um, and... It seems to have disappeared after I opened it. Uh, There was this uh, study uh, that was uh, like a case study. It it took a bunch of other studies. And uh, so the author of this study, uh, 
came on CNN. And the study basically said, like, hey, according to all the evidence, masks just didn't work. Didn't right. work. Didn't work. No matter what Bill Nye the Frog Guy tells you. And so CNN, they're so used to having these types of people on their side about everything that they had this guy on to clear it up. You can tell the idea of this piece that we're about to watch is to clear the air. Yeah, like, to get you know, people face. are saying, yeah. no, not to get in his face. They expect him to be on their side. They're like, you know, people are saying your study actually says that people shouldn't wear masks. But you're not you're not saying that, right? right. So Dude, stupid. it's the funniest piece of footage watching what he expects this guy to say and try to and how he tries to guide this guy to say yeah. it. This watch is this. Bro. Like, oh, we got to do a it first. Hold on. Dude, uh, I love that they feel like they have to sell you toilet paper like yeah, the marketing of like these bears so going, dumb, dude. oh i love my like no paper in my asshole like <laughs> thank you like wow those bears wiped their ass with this paper i wasn't gonna buy toilet paper yeah. this week but i think i'm no, gonna no, go. no, no, get the one where the bears don't get any paper in the butt and when they're and Red Bears, too. Who's ever red, seen red Bears? Get with the ginger okay, Senator Rand Paul this tweeted out so a clip good. from the interview saying Fauci admits that masks don't work for the public at large, but still absurdly claims masks work on an individual basis, more subterfuge. Immediately after, a variety of outlets all piled on, lending their assessment in their headline writing. The New York Post uh, roasted Fauci by saying that he was a fraud and a liar He's after a being confronted and a liar. with damning studies like on Bill masks. Nye. Newsweek said Fauci COVID mask admission sparks furious backlash. Yeah. The Independent, Dr. Fauci refutes study claiming that masks don't work as COVID concerns rise. The Daily Mail getting in on the action, more subterfuge from Fauci, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, Fox News and Newsmax then joined in. Some do not want to let go of the panic surrounding COVID-19, yeah, including the mad scientist himself who was on CNN over the weekend uh, and really pushing back against so much science. Just like the seasonal flu, Scarf Lady and Tony the Terrible are back and circulating on air. This exchange that Anthony Fauci had with Michael Smirconish on CNN, literally, I couldn't believe it. I say sometimes on CNN, I'm glad they brought it up, but the way that they let him get away with this. Follow the science or follow this loser? Dr. Fauci getting confronted with a damning study on masks. There is a perception out there by many, how many, I don't know, that they don't work. Was this McConaughey really actually also wearing a mask? The flames were still being fanned Thursday by post columnist Miranda Devine, who wrote masks don't work against yeah, COVID-19. Dr. Fauci you. should use one to gag himself. The yeah, Cochran I'm reports in. physical interventions to interrupt or reduce the spread of respiratory viruses Shut was published up. earlier this year. An aggregate analysis of scientific studies on the efficacy of masks. Dr. Lena Wen in the Washington Post is called the Cochran a highly so reputable good. source. Its systemic reviews are considered the gold standard of medical analysis. So I thought I would go to the source, the first author of the Cochrane study, and hear his side of the controversy. Dr. Tom Jefferson joins me now. He's an epidemiologist and senior associate tutor at the University of Oxford. Okay, Dr. Thank you for being here. Some quick context. The 2023 publication is actually the fifth update. You were you would refer to yourself, I think, as the first author. Cochrane is peer reviewed. And this is an assessment of research by others, meaning in this case, 78 randomized control trials, not original research. All true. Uh, I have to correct you, Michael. It was the fourth update. The 2023 is the fifth update. Uh, okay. Also, uh, you're right. Seven, there are 78 trials, but that those are not it, only about masks, and they're not on. It makes me feel good when CNN also has trouble with Zoom. I'm yeah. like, okay. Yeah, so, well, all we all know Zoom sucks. In fact, there's yeah. only two on COVID, or third mentioned. Okay, I'm trying to just set the stage so that I can ask you the key question: Do masks sure. work, in your opinion, in stopping the spread of COVID? Well. We we have got, as I said, we've got three uh, SARS-CoV-2, uh, three trials on SARS-CoV-2, and none of them show an effect. Um, That's no. It is impossible to show that something doesn't work in this case. And we, uh, science adopts a probabilistic approach, so it's a chance approach. Is it more likely than not? At the moment, there is no evidence that that is the case, that they work. And, and which ma mask against which uh, pathogen? There's hundreds of pathogens. So that's a situation. Now, um, earlier on, you quoted uh, uh, some of the uh, our assessment of some of the trials. Uh, and yes, some of the trials are poor quality. Face. 
um, because they are very, very difficult studies to carry on, uh, to, to carry out. The logistically, they're very difficult. And Lucas, sometimes it's very difficult to, oh, they had to, to cut comply away from him. He was dying. with wearing a mask or washing hands or any of the other interventions we're looking at. So these are the limits of what we've done. So listen, he's not happy with that at all. So Look. I'm I'm hoping to bring clarity <laughs> to viewers <laughs> because you, it's very hard to we're follow Americans as people. It sounds to me, Dr. Jefferson, as you are saying, we don't know. And and See, by that's the not way, when I said. when I look at the author's conclusion, <clears throat> and I'll put this on the screen, the author he didn't say we don't know, to be clear. He said yeah. they don't work. The author's, yeah. the author's con conclusion from the most recent of these flat out says there is uncertainty about the effects of face masks. So I don't want people to think that you're here saying they don't work. It sounds to me like you're here saying, no. I can't tell you if they do or they don't work, but please speak for yourself. <laughs> you're correct. I can't tell you whether they work or don't work, but it's more likely than not that they, they don't work. Okay? <laughs> Based on, yes. this is not just against SARS-CoV-2, the, co best, the COVID dude. pathogens. We're looking he at just keeps trying to interventions get to over uh, 78 trials over 50 years. The whole review is over half a million uh, participants in these trials. Now, the, the underlying problem that you've got there is that people are drunk with certainty. Yes. They're told that something works. Yeah, End that's of the it. story. That's not science. What science is about is, is likely or unlikely to work or we can't find any evidence of it. So, it, but when the you say, you but Dr. Jefferson, when Dr. Jefferson, when you the opine that, you that in your opinion it's more likely than not that they don't work, that then puts you at odds, and herein lies the confusion with the editor in chief. Put this on the screen. Carla Soares Weiser, the editor in chief of the Cochrane Library, says, "Quote: Many commentators have claimed that a recently updated Cochrane review shows that masks don't work." which is an inaccurate and misleading interpretation. It would be accurate to say the that the review the examined study. whether interventions to promote mask wearing helped to slow the spread of respiratory viruses and that the results were inconclusive. Do you disagree with her statement? Uh, Dr. Soares Weiser appears to be apologizing for the misconceptions and the misquotes <laughs> of third parties which is extraordinary. If I had a pound or a dollar for every time I'd been misquoted, uh, I'd be in the Bahamas. I wouldn't be here speaking to you, sunning myself in my, my huge villa. Uh, being misquoted and misunderstood, unfortunately, and being also in a political forum like this, which is not my, my, uh, my natural habitat, I don't, you know, this, is, this, is, this has become political. You see, the first uh, four iterations, the first three iterations of the review, were, went completely unremarked, apart from the 2020. The 2020 update, the 2023 update, they started getting attention simply because masks had become political. Now, you see that they've been doing these for years before the pandemic. And he's saying now, only now are the liberals getting in our ass for saying masks don't work yeah. because they became this political football. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. this is a political medium. And I can only tell you what the science is, uh, the, the reliable science shows with all its limits. What I just told you. It puts the public. I can't make up look, stuff. He, he just can't deal with that. Dude. Okay. And I, I understand that. I, I guess I would just say this. It puts those members of the public, in, I include myself, in a very awkward spot because on one hand, <laughs> someone is going to hear this conversation and say, I, I heard the first author of the Cochrane study say that in his opinion, it's he more likely than not it. that they he don't just work. Keeps and then somebody else You're is going to say, well, yeah, stop but wait it, a minute, stop the editor-in-chief of that it. very same publication and library listen, listen has a totally one, one different interpretation. And then the left yeah, and they, right will seize upon which element suits their political interest. You get the final word, but it's got to be just 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, okay, it's a political menu. It's a political football. It's got nothing to do with science, isn't it? You just described it. Uh, it the Cochrane hierarchy has done other things that we will uh, make public in, on our Substack Trust the Evidence.
oh. and systematically undermined both the 2020 Whoa! and the 2023 uh, 23 work. Threw that yeah. lady All 12 of them. Yeah. Under the bus, uh, the yeah. So that's my final wow! word. Now, if you're, if you're viewers are so interested in finding an answer, they should put pressure on those in power to, cur to conduct good quality trials, Never gonna good have quality stop, no. studies. What is that? Dude, how funny answer. was that? Him that trying to get at this garbage. guy. Yeah. That guy stuff. is garbage. He sucks, dude. They're like, well, you're putting us in the bad position we've because been saying we've been years. lying yeah. <laughs> and now you're calling us liars. Dude, it was so funny, That man. was so great. Because you not. could tell what he expected to get from that guy was yeah. not that. Yeah. He thought, I mean, like, oh, he's a scientist. Or, he plays or ball. Or he thought he was going to just make him look like an Maybe, idiot. yeah. But I don't I, I don't but think. That's I think crazy they were that scrambling. that guy came out and threw basically the editor under the bus saying so that funny, she doesn't know what she's talking about. And this institute has done this before. Because you know what happened is this editor, whoever that was, the president, got Hell came raining down on her yeah. from all over the place. Fauci people, everybody saying, you're making us look stupid. So she had to just, it doesn't matter if it's real or not. She just has to make a statement, which allows that dumbass to go out there and go, oh, we don't know who's telling the truth. It's just plausible deniability. And they have no ethics. That guy who works at CNN, who could be like, I'm just reading a, a fucking teleprompter. The producers have no ethics and they hate humanity. They are they are brown shirts yes. for the establishment. They're all scumbags. It could be right off of Russian propaganda TV, dude. I mean that's that whole what? segment was yeah, just like 100%. that. 100%. Yeah. It's unreal. All right, Josh. That made me laugh so hard, dude. Fun show. Yeah, that was the first of fun with stupids. Uh, uh did you see that James O'Keefe is back at it? Oh uh, yeah, he had this an encounter is great. with uh, Mark Cuban in a gym, like like a hotel gym or something, which was just. Oh hey Mark, how are you? How you doing? Oh hi Mark. Good, how are you? Doing? Uh, it's James O'Keefe. Oh. Were you hire Wee Woo? What? Like Mark Wee Woo? Not that simple. So Wee is this woman that's been pressuring I love him to it. be hired uh, I love because it. of DEI for uh, I, for the Mavericks, the team he owns. Uh, and she's harassed him on, and she, he blocked her. Mark Cuban blocked her on Twitter. I love it. Because stop, stop it. it. Stop it. Yeah, yeah. Because they've done this stuff on campuses where they'll go up to these liberals and go, do you believe in diversity? Do yeah. you think that, hey, how about, how about in sports? And they're like, no, 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 no. Only the best, the best get on there. Because they don't, they think everything else is just opportunity. They don't think, like you went to, you went to my show the other night. There's levels to comedy. There's people who have just have a natural, like Felipe, Bobby, and oh, Burt Kreischer. Felipe, I mean, just have, like, they're all, everybody there was night. Everybody there was a legend in that lineup. But you know Felipe, like his first set at a coffee shop or whatever, there was, like, people were rolling. He just is it. great. Yeah, like, funny. the to think that all comedians are equal and, like, the ones that just no. thrive are the ones who get the opportunity is so dumb. And that's literally what Mark Cuban is doing with this dumb DEI stuff. And not and only now I will say the one thing that's very funny about Mark Cuban is he has a lot of white guys on his team. He's one of those yeah, teams does, yeah. that goes he very white, yeah. right? That goes very white. I wouldn't be surprised if he's crunched the numbers and found that there's actually a little edge to be gained by getting more white guys that are kind of underrated. Like or you're something. selling of tickets and stuff like that because you're, oh, yeah, be. most of your audience is white because that's who can afford the tickets. You know he knows those numbers, though, like, yeah, for sure. But yeah. he's like, dude, James O'Keefe is totally right. Like, what? We haven't even gotten into it yet, though. Let's yeah, just let it go. play just a little bit. It's Brett. Every time I post anything, he posts something ridiculous. <laughs> go right after that. I'll find the only fucking moron. This DI has to do with post. I wonder, they put this, have you noticed this song they put on here is like a very popular pop song? I wonder if they've done that to like fuck people on YouTube for trying to play this video. You know what I mean? Like, so it would be demonetized because of the song under. Maybe. Isn't that interesting? Maybe. That I song, mean, they do like do a, that, right? You see people do that when they, they're getting filmed and they don't want to be filmed. They'll play a song. So now it's copyright and they can't play it. Yeah. I wonder if he's done that. Well, of course, how, Who's he? How am I for James O'Keefe. I mean, it's his video. He put the. The sound better. But doesn't that screw him too? No, because he's posting this on Twitter mostly now, I think. Okay, go on. Who cares? You're a pussy. Mark Cuban calls him a pussy. Then they go back to working out. Yeah, uh, so he's got a hidden camera footage here. You can see Mark Cuban and James O'Keefe. He's apparently got cameras all over, like in water bottles. 
I think he has one like on his uh, lapel or something. And by the way, uh, Mark Cuban's huge. Yeah, uh, he's a big guy. He's a big dude. Seven, we're getting the same chip. Yeah. Hey, you got a guess? Why did Why did you say that? Edited in the video. Oh my God, great. God. So what happened was uh, James, uh, Mark Cuban accused James O'Keefe of editing this video about Pfizer that he did not actually edit. Of course. And then later had was he kind of pretended he apologized to him publicly and didn't. And they're talking about I know. He said I'm an ass. No, I said lie about your ass. Don't lie. How do I lie on my ass? Well, when you went to uh, Aggie Gate Tap, was it? Or never was. And he said Pfizer was a bad company and they were intentionally changing. Uh, the buck sign if you take the Byron. Yeah. That's what the guy said. Uh, no. Hey, he Mark. He said they were meaning Mark. about. He said they were mutant. He said they were fucking the possibility of huge difference. Mm -hmm. you know Pfizer ultimately is thinking about mutating COVID? Well, that is not what we say to the public. No. <laughs> don't tell anyone those stories. You gotta publish your own time. You gotta publish your own time. We're exploring, like, no, you know how the virus keeps mutating? Yeah. Well, one of the things we're exploring is, like, why don't we just mutate it ourselves so we can create unbelievable vaccines, right? Unbelievable. There's something that du reeks of this interview. This whole thing. You think this is fake? Oh, I, I, I think. You think? Oh, you think it's the virus? Agenda. Well, I'm gonna tell you something, because if you buy this, yeah. that validates a virus. But I'm only gonna say this: Pfizer, within like 48 hours, had their CEO come out and admit to it, saying the government, the government made him do it. Mm -hmm. Like, why would Pfizer come out and admit that? Why would you litigate that to the end of days? Then the last time, admit that. It's just like there's something about us makes no effing sense. It, I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry. Just the way everyone gives away secrets to get butt, it just makes no sense. That to is me. the thing I doubt least about this. Uh, if you were in a position of that, uh, you worked at Pfizer in some alternate reality, and some hot chick started asking you questions about your job, and you seemed like you were going to get head at the end of the would night, I, you, uh, would, you would give up all the secrets. Johnny, of course you would. Johnny, would I admit to things that could legally get me in trouble. That if you think I would do that, you don't know After me. After a few drinks, dude, are you no, kidding? I wouldn't. And you thought you were gonna get laid? Not for butt. Of course you would, dude. Come no, on. Nope. 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 In one ear, stay there. That. Okay. Keep running. It. So you want to believe this? We have to do that. If we're gonna do that, though, there's a risk of like. I, I mean, this guy definitely thinks he's telling the truth. I can guarantee you that this guy thinks he's telling the truth. The point is, not. is that within 48 hours, one of the most powerful men on earth through a press conference, admitting something that could get them legally in bad trouble. Didn't know, did it? I mean, so yeah, that, that suggests just maybe. Because, yeah, I, no, you're, I get what you're saying, but I, I why are no the lawyers? Why aren't they putting out things plausible deniability? Take us to court, sue us to this, where we have to admit at the last second. I mean, the fact that Mark Cuban's like making them into a bad company. They literally <laughs> had the biggest court-ordered payout of all time. I, 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 yeah, I, mean, I get it. I mean, maybe they were just trying to get out in front of this for their stock price. I could totally see that. All right, go on. <laughs> this is the kind of story you don't want lingering out there with, you know, if, if it's going to crater your stock price. Uh, pharma company mutating fucking viruses. You don't think the public has a right to know what you yeah. yeah, and you showed the video. That's great. Yeah. You lied about it to everybody you wanted. How did I lie? I just told you. You said that he said that, that you did the virus and did say that. And you know he did say that. Yeah, but you're exactly apologizing to right. me privately. Yeah, okay, great, because I, I just did 2020. Are you going to apologize publicly now? No, I did apologize. I'll just not directly. Oh, yeah, oh. Look at my timeline. Have you apologized also? Were you player WeeWoo? What? Fresh Fox WeeWoo. That shit is ridiculous. He's in every one of my threats. Every time I post anything, she posted something ridiculous. Okay, I know you gotta hire Asians and DEI for that. No, 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 no. Because DEI has nothing to do with quotas. Oh, you're so full of shit. So this full. DEI has to do with quotas. I'm not trying to finesse this. So for black This is the CEO of IBM talking. Yeah. Actually, we should try to get towards 13 point something percent. On Hispanics, you gotta get into the mid teens. On gender, okay. We are somewhere in the mid 30s, I think, for all of IBM. But <laughs> okay, so all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. All right. I, I just want you to apologize. Where's your camera? Where's the camera? I don't know. I just want to Where's your camera at here? I just want to Do you have a camera here? I don't know. I see it all the time. I don't know. Like, good thing. See, I think he's in this legal trickery. It depends on what state he's in. That he, if he's, he can't deny having a camera. Probably, you know what I mean.
like legally, because then he probably wouldn't be able to use the footage. Yeah. Camera here now. Yeah, I mean, no, 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 no. No, I'm recording them right now. Last Sunday. It's fine. Hey, why you do that? I'm here. So Mark's trainer comes in now and is really kind of giving some masculine energy. Here at the Safari Club. I'm just here for the day. Him and Elon Musk and I had a spat on Twitter. It's okay. So, 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 why you do that? No, 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 no they're they're not they're Jewish, but they're not re they don't really do all, any of that. It's like the Hollywood ones, right? Like a, a oh, Mark gotcha. Marin yeah. or a, a, um, your boy uh, who has Bill Bill Maher he's, that he's, stuff. He, he's not who I, who like I love Bill, uh, he's, Mark. He's Marin, like but. half Jewish, by, but he grew up Catholic. Okay, Bill did. so so it's very funny that so this whole thing with the Oscars now. That the Oscars are going, you have to have X number of representation in your sh movies to be, which is going to destroy the Oscars. How They're, can you do a historical film now? A percentage of the cast and the crew has to be one of everything or else you can't be nominated. The funniest thing ever, the, the, like the, the Jewish Alliance of Actors came out and asked that the Oscars have to ask for a certain percentage to be Jewish. Like... Can you believe that? That's like unreal. That's uh, look so it funny. up. Look it up. It's they're getting murked on Twitter right now. Even Jewish people are laughing at Hollywood ginos for saying that they should have a certain amount of uh, Jews in the cast. Oh, like they wouldn't hit that number instantly this, every time. This is from Fox News. Uh, Deborah Messing, David Schwimmer, others call out Academy for excluding Jews from Oscars diversity standards. That's so hilarious. Maya Bialik, Juliana Margulies, Josh Gad were also among the for open letters. For some reason, signatories. Tiffany Haddish was included in that. I Are you to, serious? Yeah, I saw a picture of Tiffany Haddish. Uh, that's so funny. A large group of Jewish entertainers have signed an open letter calling out the Academy of Motion Pictures, Motion, motion Picture Arts and Sciences for excluding Jews from its recently implemented Oscars. Josh Johnny, would you go? Would you agree that that is the most unself-aware shit in it's the hilarious. world? It's hilarious. It's so unself-aware. It's so unself-aware. They and like they just and like, dude, love Jews. Jews are great. It's just like you can't help yourself. You're retarded. It would be like with that Rooney rule, you know, if white white dudes were like, no, hey, it's like hey, the, we got to get some white guys interviewed for these head coaching jobs. You know? It's like the NBA going, we have to figure out how we can represent blacks in the league. So funny, dude. It's so dumb. So okay. Funny. All right. Let's uh, go into here's news. Here's a quick thing. Um, did you see this? This guy had some balls on him. He, dude, this uh, <laughs> is so funny that even his wife laughs. <laughs> so Ron DeSantis uh, is doing whatever the fuck he does uh, on a campaign stop. And this guy uh, approaches him with uh, a trophy. Let's let's play this. Okay. But nothing's gonna stop us. Uh, real quick, before we get started, thank you, everyone. Governor DeSantis, I want to present to you this participation trophy. <laughs> <laughs> now, probably not gonna win the election, right? But we're proud of you for trying. <laughs> there you go. Sorry, buddy. I mean, Sorry. he's special. He's unique, <laughs> and he's our little snowflake. <laughs> thank you. That you is go. great. You that is great. Board? What a bit. Like, By that the way, has some balls, bro. yeah. Good By the him. way, Ron DeSantis, did you play this all wrong? I mean, you should have just chilled in Florida. No. You should have chilled in Florida, let the Trump thing play it out, either through this last year and it's done, or he gets the presidency, and then you just wait, bro. But now, you think he's stupid? Nikki Haley is the dumbest human being on the planet, or she's just or so she? crazy that she gave away what's going to happen when she goes after she took third in Iowa and she's like, it's down to two people. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, you're you're so right. Yeah, it's I like, mean, like, yeah. like, dude, that 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 Seek is a freak, right? She's a freak. Boy Vivek, uh, he traded in his uh, his chips real quick too, didn't he? He's yeah, like he was in already going in with yeah. Trump. Yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, you got. I mean, it's either the Trump or the Biden wins. If I'm a Republican, it's either Trump winning or Biden's winning. There's nobody else. But listen, it, it's just crazy to me, dude. And like, it's so funny because you know, listen, man. It's very weird to me that I actually have people who I consider good friends of mine that are very close with Robert Kennedy Jr., like very close. And they all say he's a good guy. Is he still campaigning? Yeah, he is, right? he's running. Seen much from. Well, of course, he's getting boxed out because they want down to these two guys. I wish he had stayed in the... Well, no, he's just doing an independent, though, right? Right, yeah, I wish he's he thinking stayed. about bringing in Tulsi Gabbard as his vice president, which would be very interesting. That would be very interesting. So, but for, for me, dude, it's just like his stance on Israel. And then he had to put out this thing about, uh, oh, uh, I will never, ever take your guns after he's like common sense. <laughs> like, dude, you can't do that, bro. You can't do it. No, you can't. You're going to lose everybody. everybody. You start, and then dude, like, I'm sorry, but you know, that thing we watched in, on Tim Fall ha like, about, the court finding Israel guilt. Uh, yeah, the, the and Hague, yeah. I couldn't find it anywhere else. It's so crazy. It's literally nowhere. And I'm like, did that happen or is that uh, some? Let's see. Maybe, Maybe what they were reading was just the indictment. Like that was uh, what. Like that's this is what is being alleged by South Africa. Okay. And, you know, and this. Uh, they say you should take a couple weeks for this to get out, but. Um, Anyways, yeah, well, I, there's so many people that are just mislabeling videos and like yeah, tri it, trying to trick you into well, yeah. Oh, yeah. sharing shit that ain't true. Because this it, is the big is. problem on Twitter right now is you. it doesn't have to be your video to get paid. You can just rip a video, put it on Twitter. Yeah. If enough people watch it, you can make a bazillion dollars. Yeah, it's crazy. So anyways, so, so you know, and then his stance on Israel is just going to, uh, dude, it's only going to get crazier. Blow up in his face. Yeah, it's just going to blow up in his face. And it's just like, and you know, with him being on those Epstein flights, regardless of what he tells yeah. us, and like people have said, they've had talks with him about Israel before, and that public stance doesn't fit. It's crazy. Really? Oh, that's interesting. It's not the same. Huh. Whitney Webb said that. She had private conversations with him about Israel. So what's, who's, who's, is that just his, the price he has to pay to yep. what? Yep. Stay in the game or what? 100%. Huh. So interesting. Um, so this is the last little fun with stupid. This is just right. This tells you that MSNBC uh, hasn't changed at all. This means that of people turn. This is what she thinks is going on in the world. I'll just say out to caucus in Iowa. A third of them think that if Donald Trump is convicted, he is not fit to be president in this incredibly conservative electorate where Trump is going to run away with Correct. the Iowa uh, dude, caucuses mm -hmm. dude. by a mile and then some. Still a third of that yes. electorate says that he's convicted. Boy, Chris that Hayes is aged, hasn't he? No, <laughs> they all age. Like, how is this woman on television? How does, like, I like, I go, Dana, how do you watch her when she got everything wrong for yeah. five years? Like, she got nothing right. Nothing. Why do you listen to her? Why? It's I'm, so dumb. I'm just the Iowa it. caucuses mm -hmm. by a mile and then some. Still, a Chris third of that oh, electorate yes. says if he's convicted, mm -mm, mm -hmm. they're going to nominate him nationwide. Yeah. Look at her. Yeah, when even a third of Iowa caucus goers well, and, say no, he can't be president if he's convicted. I'm sorry, but he's going to be convicted. <laughs> well, Rachel, there's overwhelming. <laughs> like there, she's sure he's going to be convicted. Of course he is, dude. They're rigging the whole thing. What what does that mean though? Like, because he can still run, right? Like, technically, he could be president in jail. Yeah, that's what they're talking about. Yeah, which and, and are you? Do you think people wouldn't vote for him if he was? In oh, jail? dude, they're gonna keep. They fucking would dude, vote they're for gonna him keep voting for him yeah, to the point would. where you wonder if this is done on purpose. Because DeSantis is telling everybody that they think they rigged it for Trump because they called it at one percent. So they told everybody why even go vote. It's already we're calling it for Trump. That is weird. Yeah, that was I thought. Wait, so and too. how do we know that? Because you remember Chris Hages? Is that not Chris? Who's the old guy? Chris something that used to be on MSNBC. Chris Matthews. Chris Matthews that used to yell and all that. Do you remember? He said hardball. early, like on Hardball, he said the plan is to call it early in California for Hillary, so so that people don't go out and vote. Yeah, yeah, he said. Yeah. So now you go. Are they doing this for Trump? For me, dude, their love, their love of uh, of Nikki Haley lets you know everything you need to know about her. Yeah. And MSNBC is just 
complete and everyone gets so interesting that everyone shits on CNN and like nobody's shitting all over MSNBC. It's because nobody watches MSNBC. Oh, do <laughs> they? Really, no, I mean, it's, nobody just, does. it's just so bad right now. And Rachel Maddow's is literally the equivalent of Jessamay Smollett walking around. Jesse Smollett. <laughs> whatever his fucking name is, like walking around. Like, why do you hear and listen to anything this woman says? She's an idiot. She's an idiot. I'll hit the news real quick. Uh, so this is I gotta go. Pick up your guitar Sing me a song This was Groover's paradise Now the Groover is gone Was a cool little city 